So Prince Harry has cut an increasingly lonely figure in recent times, skulking solemnly around the States amidst reports that he's considering relocating back here to the UK. And our very own Phil Dampier has offered an inside perspective into Harry's state of mind this week, suggesting that the runaway royal is struggling without his own friendship group, leaving wife Meghan free to control his social life. Well, I'm very pleased to say that Phil, alongside Lady C, joins me now. So, Phil, what more can you tell us about that, then? Yeah, good evening, Patrick. This is actually an interview that I gave to The Sun the other day, and quite a few people seem to have picked up on it. Uh, I mean, I'm told on good authority that he's quite, uh, he's quite lonely, he's quite isolated in California. Uh, maybe that's part of uh, Meghan's plan, to isolate him from his friends as well as his family. I just don't feel that he's got uh, a group of mates to go out and have a few beers with and unwind and relax and talk about matey men things that uh, we all like to do at the pub. And uh, I think he's become completely dependent on her for his social life. I mean, we see him at things like uh, the Beyonce concert, uh, basketball matches and uh, things like that. Uh, Formula One he was at. But he always seems to be with sort of, you know, corporate types, people that he works with. He doesn't seem to be with a group of mates. And I think this is having quite an effect on him. And uh, when you think, I don't like talking about Christmas in November, when you think Christmas is coming up next month, uh, you know, he's be the third Christmas he hasn't seen his family. I think he's becoming quite lonely and quite isolated. Uh, I don't have any information about him wanting to move back here, but uh, I think it's starting to take its toll on him. Yeah, Lady C, I mean, everyone could see this coming, couldn't they? You know, you, you get married, and then all of a sudden you cut ties with your family, you cut ties with your long-standing friends, you move continent, and in shock horror, you've got someone pulling your strings all the time. Yeah, but that's Meghan's game plan. You know, Meghan is a dominatrix and Harry is a subservient. And what she has done is she has isolated him from all of his old support group, family, friends. I mean, the fact of the matter is my understanding is a lot of his English friends don't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Uh, but I mean, who does he have to be friends with? Phil is absolutely right. In America, the only person he has who is his friend, as opposed to somebody associated with Meghan mm. is Nacho Figueras and his wife. Absolutely no one else does he have. It's absolutely astonishing. I mean, he's, he's like a Stockholm victim. Mm. Phil, are we too quick to blame Meghan here? I mean, Harry's a grown man, for goodness sake, and he's got to sort himself out, as and see, he's wandered into this situation. Well, yeah, he has got to grow some, I suppose. You could argue that, that he needs to stand up to his wife. But we, we're not allowed to say that sort of thing these days, are we? It's, it's, it's sort of misogynistic. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, it should, like any, any good marriage, it should be a partnership. Uh, they should listen to each other. But uh, she ought to know that uh, for him to be happy and for the marriage to be successful, he has got to have some, some outlets. He has got to be able to let off some steam. I mean, James Corden was living out there, wasn't he? He might have been a friend, but he's come back to England. Uh, there's people like Elton John who uh, he's over in Europe, so he's not going to see him very often. So Lady C's right, apart from apart from the polo player, I don't really know any friends he's got out there. So he, he is getting increasingly isolated, I think. Maybe he's just not very good company, Lady C. <laughs> well, actually, he used to be very good company, I'm assured. I mean, I haven't seen him since he was a little boy. Uh, and he, he and William used to play with my children. But, you know, he always uh, was supposed to be good company. And so, no, I think he was good company. But Meghan's game plan has been to isolate him, and she has successfully achieved that, you know. But it's, it's, it goes along with her personality. She isolates people. That's how she has domination and control and power. OK, uh, all right. And, Phil, I suppose people, like we were saying, could have seen this coming. The, the question is, what now? I mean, there is only so long somebody, especially if somebody's already had a few issues, which he's been very open about in the past, and mental health and everything like that, can remain vehemently unhappy for. Can't he? And I wonder whether or not, as well, he's got this issue with you know, his parents' marriage splitting up and him not wanting to repeat the mistakes of the past. Is he just trapped? 
He is a little bit trapped. I mean, there, there was this talk of him moving to New York as a sort of stopgap. I don't think that's really going to work. I think he needs to come back here a bit more often and uh, maybe see some of his old friends, even if Meghan doesn't come with him. I mean, I've said many times before, I don't think she feels particularly welcome back in the UK and I don't think she wants to come back. But uh, maybe he should come back on some private visits or find some charities to get involved with again, and yeah. that might help. But uh, at the moment, he's, uh, he's out there and uh, looking a bit friendless. All right, look, ladies, see, I just want to ask you about a slightly different topic, but keeping in relation to Harry, because uh, the Netflix series The Crown has been yeah, ramping up again, hasn't it? And, and it's got a few deeply controversial moments in it. It's got the death of Diana. It's got this idea that she might have been pregnant when she died. It's got the idea that she might have been part of some kind of uh, establishment plot to murder her. And then there's the ghost scene as well. Do you feel sorry for Harry for having this out there? I mean, most people don't have this out there about their mother, do they? Well, I think Netflix has pulled a very interesting one where Harry is concerned. Netflix has bought Harry's silence and let's wait and see what happens because The Crown has been a huge success for Netflix. Harry has and Meghan's operation with Netflix is chicken feed compared to, to the importance that they placed upon the crowd. And let's wait and see, once this is all done and dusted, how long Harry and Meghan's association with Netflix is going to last. Wow. Because what they have done is they have bought Harry's silence uh, with, you know, dangling a few million carrots underneath mm. his nose. So it's it's a really interesting dynamic. And I mean, you know, I mean, nobody could pay me enough money to betray my, my parents, but I suppose Harry's a different case. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it would appear so. Just final word to you on this, Phil, then. Do you feel as though Netflix has bought Harry's silence over his comments about potentially deeply insensitive footage and or dramatised footage anyway of his own mother's death and then resurrection as a ghost. Yeah, well, we know we know he's going to watch it, don't we? He said that in the in the Netflix series that he watches The Crown, unlike other members of the royal family. So, uh, you know, he probably has had his silence bought. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, this business. I, I did say the other week that I thought it would be a good thing if, if it stuck to the facts and a new audience would get to know about Diana. But sadly, if they're going to start going in, in, into some of the conspiracy theories that she might have been pregnant or she was bumped off, then, you know, it, I'm afraid uh, it's a bit of a fall on hope. But, uh, yes, yeah, well, on, on that, on that, Phil, sorry to cut across, we've not got long left. And, uh, Lady C, look, you know, uh, all of these things that are coming out in the Crown now, I know that it's, it's a drama, but the unfortunate reality is that this gets beamed out around the world and a lot of people just take it as fact. You know, was Diana pregnant at the time of her death? Was she bumped off? She definitely was not bumped off. Diana would have survived if she had had on her seatbelt. You know, any, any, there, there have been exhaustive inquiries and investigations done. And when I wrote my posthumous Diana Bayon from the Real Diana, I spoke to all of the parties concerned, uh, including the doctor who, who immediately attended to her. Dr. Mayo, I think, was his name. We lectured the following year after her death mm -hmm. at at Birkbeck College together. And, you know, there's absolutely no doubt that she, it cannot have been a hit because okay. the only people who knew the, where the car was headed were the four people in the car. Is okay. it realistic that, that there were going to be 30 or 40 different sets of people scattered throughout Paris to hit Diana? And, and if she'd had on a seatbelt, she'd have survived. OK, It's all right. absolutely crazy. Both of you, thank you very, very much. Wonderful stuff. That's Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier. Thank you both very much.